Now your Google Ads running, but the cost per lead is too high or the performance is just not what you expected. Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you the Google Ads audit checklist that we use. So if you want more customers from your Google Ads without even increasing your monthly budget, then this video is for you. Stick around until the end because the last tip is a common mistake we see a lot of Google Ad managers making. If you're new here, hi, I'm Kurt from OneBase Media and I'm here to help you get more local customers for your service business. So if you don't wanna miss any videos, join our community and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified. Okay, so we'll be using this document which has all the issues listed that come up when running a Google Ads campaign. You can tick each issue off as you go through them. The link for the document is in the description. Now every single page will have the main issue on it. All you have to do is replace this image with the screenshot of the problem inside Google Ads Manager. Then write down the issue over here and after that, write down the solution. I will show you how to do this for each issue listed in this document. So let's start with the first issue, negative keywords. To check if you have a negative keyword issue, go into your Google campaign, select keywords in the overview section, and then click on search terms. From here, you can see all the keywords that your ad is showing up for. Now, if you see keywords which are getting clicks but are not converting, you want to exclude them and put them in the negative keywords list. You can easily save at least 10 to 20% of your ad budget and get the same results by regularly adding negative keywords. Now, take a screenshot of the keywords that are triggering the ads but not converting and upload it over here. After that, list out all the keywords over here in the issue section. And for the solution, you'll put all those keywords in the negative keywords list. So your ads don't keep showing up whenever someone searches for those exact keywords. Next is, are your ads getting any impression? Impressions refer to the number of times your ad is shown on a web page. It's counted each time your ad is displayed, regardless of whether or not it is clicked. So if your ads are not getting any impressions, it can be linked to a bidding issue. Go to your campaign overview and change one of the metrics to impressions. We can see here that this campaign is getting a lot of impressions, but if your campaign has zero or a very small number, that means Google is not showing your ads. One of the main reasons for Google to not show your ads is that your bids are too low to compete with other ads or you don't have enough keywords. So the solution is to increase your bids, add more keywords and add additional ad groups to the campaign in order to compete with the other ads. Next, you want to make sure that you're not bidding too low. To check this, go to Keyword Planner and see the average bidding amount of the keywords you're targeting. If your bids are lower than the average bids in your industry, that means you're bidding too low and that can affect the performance of the ads. There are two solutions to this issue. You can either increase the bids for the whole campaign or you can increase it at the ad group level. The next major issue is location settings. Most businesses get location settings wrong and it can have a disastrous effect on the performance of your ad campaign. Go to your overview section and select location. Now you want to find the locations which are getting a lot of clicks, but no conversions and remove them. Another mistake that a lot of businesses make is that they just target the entire county. You wanna break it down to specific areas within the county rather than just targeting the whole county. This way you can have custom landing pages for specific areas. The ads will appear more localized and ad performance will be improved as a result. So the solution, pause the locations from where you're not getting any conversions and target specific areas within a county. The next issue can be the presence option in settings being incorrect. For this, head on to settings and in the location section, click on location options. Now here you'll see two options and usually most businesses will have the first option selected, which is presence or interest. If you have this option selected, then you'll get calls and inquiries outside of the area you selected. So to get leads from your area, you want to select presence, people in or regularly in your targeted area. This will show your ads only to people who live in your selected area. You'll have a much more focused and highly targeted leads coming in. You want to look at your ad schedule settings next. We've seen some businesses run ads 24 hours a day, which is something you don't want to do. You want to run ads at the times of the day which give you the best results. Google will give you data of the times that your ads are performing the best, and then you can optimize them to run only on those particular time slots. Some businesses only work nine to five, but run ads for 24 hours a day. So if they get an inquiry or a call after their working hours, it's a wasted lead because no one is there to attend to the call. Instead, you want to optimize the ads to only show when they're generating the most amount of leads. In short, you don't want to run ads 24 seven. Look at the data and optimize your ads constantly for better results. Next is device bidding issue. We've seen this many times when we review a campaign. There's lots of clicks coming from tablets, but no conversions. What you want to do is look at your device bidding and see which devices are getting you the most amount of leads and then increase the bid percentage. For instance, let's say that tablet activity is eating away at your budget, but you're not seeing any results come from the expenditure. Then you can decrease the budget by 100%. This way your ads won't be shown on tablets at all. After that, you want to look at partner settings. If you have both of these options switched on, then your ads will be shown on different websites. In our experience, both of these options 
impressions will get you traffic and clicks on your ads, but you'll see little in terms of conversions and quality leads. So if both of these options are switched on, then head on to settings and turn them off. The next issue is the times your ads are running and not converting. This issue has to do with setting up a proper ad schedule. For instance, you may see a lot of clicks on your ads midday during working hours, but they get no conversions at all. Conversely, in the evenings, your ads are converting really well because people are at home, back from work, and have time to inquire about your services. If you see this, you want to start optimizing the ad timings for evenings. After that, you want to look at your bidding strategy. When you first set up an ad campaign, you want to select and maximize clicks as your bidding strategy. After the ads have been up and running for some time and generated at least 20 conversions, then you want to change the bidding strategy from maximize clicks to maximize conversions. We've seen a lot of businesses get lots and lots of traffic and clicks on their ads, but very little to zero conversions. That's because they haven't changed their bidding strategy. So if your ads are currently not generating leads, then your bidding strategy might be the problem. Next up, you want to check the ad rotation settings. This is again part of Google's AI. You want to select optimize for the best performing ads. In this option, Google will see which ads are performing the best and allocate more of your budget to those ads. So if you have multiple ads within an ad group and you want to split test them, then this is the best option as Google is really good at pushing your budgets to the best performing ads. If the second option, do not optimize, is selected, then select the first option and you'll see your ads perform much better. Next, you want to identify if your ads have a cost per lead issue. Go into overview in your Google Ads Manager and from here you can see your cost per conversion. Currently for this client, one lead is costing about £18.48. But let's say this was closer to £100 or even £200. Then depending on the cost of your product, that could be an issue. If the cost per lead outweighs the return you would get for someone using the service you're promoting, you'll want to bring it down. Most businesses don't even know how much their cost per lead is. So go into your overview section and check. If the cost per lead is above the industry standard, then put the amount in the issue section. And for the solution, put down the settings that have to be changed inside your Google Ads to bring the cost down to the industry standard. Another issue we frequently see is businesses running all their ads through one ad group. As you can see over here, we've got multiple ad groups for this client. We have different ad groups for recovery services, towing services, vehicle towing, and vehicle transport. You don't wanna have just one ad group with hundreds of keywords. Instead, create separate ad groups and optimize the ones that are performing the best. After that, you want to check your ad quality score. Google scores your ad on three different parameters, the quality of your ad, the quality of your ad copy, and the quality of your landing page. For instance, if your landing page is not related to your ads, then Google will give you a low quality score and you end up paying a fortune per click. This is because Google wants to show the best ads, so they will penalize the ads with low quality scores by charging them more. Quality score is there to keep the really bad ads out of Google's ecosystem. Otherwise, there'd be loads of low quality ads floating around, ruining people's experience. So Google will punish the ads with low quality scores and reward the ones with high scores. From our experience, a quality score over five is really good. Anything between one and four is considered a low score. And if you have this score, you really want to work on your ads to increase it. To check your quality score, select search keywords in the overview section. As you can see, our ads quality score is eight out of 10, which is considered very good. Now it's not impossible to get a 10, but it can be very time consuming. The majority of the time, once you get over five, you'll be outperforming the competitors. In essence, if you have a high quality score, your cost per click will come down, which in return will get you more clicks for the same budget and you end up getting more customers. So focus on getting the quality score above five for a better performance of your ads. The next action is to check your ad strength. As you can see over here, our ad strength is good. This is a good indicator that our ads are unique and it improves their performance. You want your ad strength to be between good and excellent. And for that to happen, you need to keep filling in all the headlines, the description, and upload plenty of images. Focus on making your ads look as good as possible and your ad strength will then go up to excellent. Another issue that crops up regularly is ad headlines and description. We review so many ads that have three headlines and maybe one description. What you want to do instead is to fill all the headlines and all the descriptions with unique selling points. Don't fill the headlines and descriptions for the sake of it. They have to capture the attention of your customers and make them click on your ad. So make them unique and creative. If you yourself aren't convinced with the headlines you've written, then go back and start making them better. After that, you want to check if you have an ad extension issue. In the overview section, select assets and then make sure all these extensions are filled out correctly. Go through each one of them and check if they are set up as they should be. This is an example of how all these ad extensions will look when someone searches for your services. These are the site links and this is the logo. 
It all makes your business look more professional. And this here is the image extension. All of these extensions make your ad look bigger, more professional, and overall more appealing to the customer. The next issue is your ad could be getting found for your competitors' names. What we found, especially in industries with big players like plumbing, is that some of our clients' ads show up for our competitors' keywords. So people click on the ad, but don't end up converting because, well, they were searching for our competitors and not our clients. To avoid this, go in search terms and check if you're targeting your competitors' keywords. If you are and those keywords are getting clicks but no conversion, then pause those keywords or remove them from your ads altogether. Next, you might be facing conversion tracking issues. To check conversion tracking issues, go to tools and settings and select conversions. From here, you can set up your conversion tracking. Now, some businesses have 20 different conversion trackers on for one ad. And from our experience, it's a bit excessive. You want to have conversion tracking for actions that lead to sales. So for this client, we have only conversion tracking on for a few actions. The first one is the lead form from the website. We also have it on for phone calls through the call extensions and phone calls from the website. That's it. Next, it's time to see if Google recommendations are turned off. Go into campaign setting and then select recommendations and then click auto apply. Here, Google will have a ton of recommendations on how to set up and manage your ads. And if they're on, Google will use its AI and algorithms to target keywords that it thinks your customers might search for and then show them your ads. Now, this will increase traffic and the amount of keywords your ads are being found for, but we found it wastes a lot of budget and the cost per lead goes up significantly. So turn off the recommendations and do it manually or else Google will end up burning through your budget. Another major issue that affects the performance of the ads is a bad landing page experience. If you're getting loads of traffic, loads of clicks from your ads, but aren't seeing any conversions, it means you have a landing page issue. You don't want to send all your traffic to a low quality landing page or even worse, your home page. For instance, if you're running an ad about boiler repairs, you don't want to send potential customers to your plumbing website's home page that will have to navigate to find what they're looking for. Instead, direct them to a customized boiler repairs landing page. Similarly, if you're running multiple ads for different services, then you should have a landing page dedicated to each service. If you do this, you'll see a sharp increase in the number of leads from your ads. Most of the time, we see businesses sending their ad traffic to their website homepage, which is a big no-no. When it comes to optimizing your landing page, the first thing you want to look at is your hero section. That's the top part of your landing page and you want to make it look as good as possible. This is because sadly, most people won't scroll past the top. In just one glance, they will assess it and ask themselves, is this landing page solving my problem? Is it a credible business? Does it have a good offer? And if the answer to all those questions is yes, then they'll make an inquiry. Another thing customers ask themselves is, does it have images of the work? You wanna go through your landing page and upload real images of your work pictures of your team and business and don't use stock images. This will help build trust and credibility in your business. Alongside that, your landing page should have a unique offer. Your offer has to be so unique and so good that the customer finds it impossible to say no. So think about your service and what would motivate someone to make an instant purchase from you. It could be something that you can use to sell your service or product and give such a good reason to buy, they find it hard to say no. Next, your landing page should have a very clear call to action. You don't want to overcrowd and confuse your customer with 20 different calls to action. There has to be a one or maximum of two very clear and prominent calls to action on your landing page. It should be clear as day what action they have to take in order to make an inquiry about your services. Make it as simple and as easy as you can. After that, your landing page has to look good on both desktop and mobile devices. According to a recent study, 61.9% of Google Ads clicks come from mobile devices. So your landing page has to perform well on mobile devices and not just on desktop. As you can see on mobile, Bar, the contact number is prominently displayed at the top. You can access the navigation bar easily and you can smoothly navigate throughout the landing page. This landing page is so easy to navigate and that's exactly the point. Make the landing page simple and easy to use. Next, you want to ensure that the landing page matches the ad group. On the ad level, you have to make sure that your display path, in this case, boiler service, will go to a landing page for boiler services and not to a generic plumbing website or a landing page. So the landing page has to be all about the different types of boilers you offer, all the types of boiler services, the finance option and everything related to boilers. Similarly, if your ad is about emergency plumbing services, then your landing page should be all about emergency plumbing services. Next, you want to have reviews from trusted sources on your landing page. Instead of written reviews, include screenshots of reviews from trusted sources like Trustpilot, Facebook or Google. You want to make sure that your review is lifted from somewhere that is real and your customer can instantly recognize it. If your customers even have an ounce of doubt about the authenticity of the reviews or testimonials, they will leave the page. And finally, you want to add accreditations on your landing page. 
Just like reviews, accreditations build trust in your business and gives your customer an extra sense of security and a level of comfort when dealing with your business. And that's it, a complete Google Ads audit for you to revive a dead campaign and bring in more leads. Thank you for watching until the end. I hope you got a lot out of the video. So our goal here is to help you generate the best quality leads you can fill out your diary with more customers and grow your business. And that's it from me. And by the way, if lead generation is a problem for you right now, then there's a link in the description that will help you solve that problem in under three minutes. I want to say a big thank you again for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please like and subscribe. And also leave a comment in the comment section letting us know how you get on with the changes. We read and respond to all the comments we get. Have a great day. I'll see you on the next one.